So this is another very realistic question. So this uh, audience, Ace, so he asked, um, you said that the reason that you are contesting under um, Pakatan Harapan is you want to avoid any uh, three corner fights. Um, would you be worried, you know, if it's you yourself when you are contesting under PH, you are, o you are also um, coming up against like a three corner fight because there will be. Uh, yes, there will be. <laughs> yeah, there will yeah. be pass there yes, yeah. versus yeah. BN versus yeah. Pakatan yeah. Harapan. Yeah. Well, uh, hopefully we reduce the uh, three corner. Mm. So it will be perhaps if I'm standing under uh, Pakatan Harapan, mm. it will be either Pakatan Harapan uh, versus Pass or versus uh, Amno. But it will not be independent Pakatan Harapan and then uh, Pass and uh, Amno. Mm. Um, I will not do that. La. Okay, that makes sense. So I think the last one is not a question, it's actually a comment. I think maybe you can address it. Isn't it unusual for a, for a NGO to have political stand when the goal of the NGO is to achieve clean election? So I presume that the NGO that he is referring to is per se. Per se. So yeah. maybe you can answer this. Clean and fair election is politics. <laughs> it's already a political stand. Mm. That... Uh, um, that you want the whole system to actually provide level playing field mm. for all parties that are contesting. Mm. Yeah? So it's already politics. Mm. The very fact you talk about election is politics. So uh, I don't think it's unusual for an NGO to have a political stand on to have clean and fair elections. Mm. It is part and parcel of our work. Mm. But we are not um, we meaning per se mm. is not a political party mm. nor um, a partisan towards a political party. Mm. We have never been. Mm. We have always said, yeah, as per se, per uh, se has always said that, you know, we support anybody who supports our agenda. Mm. So we are very clear. Our agenda is clean and fair elections. Mm. If you support our agenda, mm then you come for our event otherwise don't come for our event <laughs> 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 and on uh, every rallies um, mm. Bursay has always invited Barisan National and mm. also uh, Pakatan Harapan it's really up to um, people who are matured enough mm. uh, and understand what clean and fair election means mm. um, if you understand you would have come for our all our rallies because um, that should be the way that is the kind of politics that I'm yes, talking about. Yes. You are mature enough to know that you know you want to level the playing field, compete e uh, equally, so that you you actually have better representatives for the people. Mm. Yeah, not mm. for yourself as mm. a elected representative. You should be actually be uh, happy that you are being elected by the people. Mm. Yeah, and you should work towards leveling that playing field. So mm. that everyone has a chance to actually say, I want this person. Not like what is being done now, the redelineation. Partially, they are determining who will be the winner. Mm. And that is already unfair. Mm. So uh, the matured politics is that, um, and it is about politics, yeah. The matured politics is really uh, to create the system that will actually be fairer, accountable, more transparent, mm. uh, which other countries have advanced to, you see, and we have not, actually we have taken many steps back. With your 33 years of experience, track, how far do you think we are there? Uh, in matured. terms of uh, maturity, mm. I think the people have matured. Seriously, mm. um, the way they have actually come into Bursay, the way they participated, the way they actually expressed. Mm. Because last time, during my time, you know, uh, when I went through uh, Operasi Lalang at that time, people are living in fear. Yeah, nobody really dare to say anything. Whereas now, people are much more daring to say what they think. Yeah, to actually like now pocket times is getting all these questions uh, it shows that you know we have matured and are able to post questions and want to discuss mm. uh, that's uh, very important for a mature society to grow mm. so we have actually reached a certain level 
Mm. Uh, only thing is the government will have to actually come to our level of maturity. Well, this is very interesting. Eh? You <laughs> mentioned <laughs> Operasi Lalang. Uh, then, <laughs> then I must ask you this. Yes. So, what's your stance? Um, what's your What's your thought about uh, Tun Mahade being the leader of Pakatan Harapan? Well, uh, I feel that uh, that is the decision of Pakatan Harapan. Mm. But um, though I say that I s am PH friendly, well, implicitly means that I accept that leadership. Mm. But uh, I also say that I will, uh, I support Pakatan because of the manifesto, and that means I support Pakatan based on principles, and I have certain principles. If any leader, yeah, be it um, Tun Mahathir or any of the other leaders, step out of those uh, principles, of course, I will say something. Ah, yeah. Okay. So it's really uh, based on principles, and that's why I say it's not just blind following. Okay, so you you actually mentioned a lot of problems or issues um, throughout the show. But what do you think is the um, biggest problem of Malaysia now? The biggest problem is um, the income disparities. Yeah. You think that's the yes. biggest problem? Yeah, it is a problem that we don't see because we we are in urban setting. Mm. Yeah, but uh, if you go to outside of the Klang Valley, yeah, uh, you will feel that. Uh, that people are struggling, yeah, struggling because um, it could be uh, they don't have enough money. The income, the purchasing power is not quite there. Uh, they're struggling, uh, so therefore that's one of the issue. Of course, at the national level, uh, we have always been talking about the corruption. Hmm. Yeah, that is also an issue. But um, f when you talk about corruption, it may not. Um, hit yeah the poor people that much because I can't even afford to have sometimes food on the table you talk about corruption um, corruption may not be my issue but putting food on the table may be uh, my issue so different regions will have different issues but I think that income disparity uh, due to rising uh, cost of living mm is a big factor in Malaysia and if we do not have the right economic policies to deal with this income disparity um, then our economy will be heading downwards so how do you think we, sh we can achieve or close this gap I think that you know uh, or how you can actually try to close this gap are there um, by having better uh, policies like for example to talk uh, to really one to understand how come uh, people are still poor yeah two is that uh, there has been a lot of money spent yeah uh, to try to help the poor yeah to give subsidies for uh, those who are in the uh, cash economy um, but then why is it that these people who are in this cash economy like Felda mm. and all that still feel that y they are struggling? Mm. Um, could it be um, mishandling of the funds? Mm. Um, could it be that you know you can have other economic policies like for mm. example a social safety net mm. yeah, for those who are uh, old yeah, mm. after a certain age, your EPF will not be able to support you. Mm. So there has to be a safety net to actually support these people. Mm. Um, to have a uh, um, medical service, mm. of course, our medical service is uh, pretty good. Right? Mm, mm. Yeah, but if um, there are certain drugs that uh, are getting more expensive, mm. so there has to be a system to say that you know those who are poor, how do how do they purchase all these drugs? Do you have to give them either free mm. or at a very subsidized level depending on their income? Mm. Uh, these kind of things uh, have to be dealt with. And then we hear stories of st uh, university students living on, you know, two, uh, one meal for two d in two days. Mm. Uh, that is really very sad mm. because uh, our education system has always been our pride. Yeah, to see students struggling uh, at that level is, um, I think, is unacceptable. So the education uh, ministry has to look into that. Is it because uh, we are not 
uh, helping our students that much. Mm. They have to really think about that, you know. It seems like you got a lot to do if you are elected. <laughs> <laughs> but I won't be doing it alone. To be honest, I won't be doing it alone. Mm. I'm confident that uh, there will be uh, PH parliamentarians who mm. are just as concerned about these issues, mm. and also to work with CSOs who are just who has been um, concerned with this issue since you know they have been formed, and this kind of energy can be uh, synergized. Okay, it has been like a good forty-five or fifty minutes discussion. Yes. Thank you. I promise that you. Be, it will be not too <laughs> long before we start. But right. okay, I will still end with one question: For those who do not want to support you or who will not vote for you in this coming election, right. um, what would you like to tell them? Well, uh, I think that's their right. Mm. Yeah, uh, but do something to to help us also to change the system. Do something. Uh, you can come up with a policy or you can uh, help um, in your own capacity uh, things that matters to you in this country. There must be something that matters to you. Uh, f uh, whether it's local to uh, national issue, there must be some issues that actually hit you. Do something about it. Okay, mm. or maybe, you know, do you want to try to convince them that, you know, they should vote for you? Uh, I don't even know where is my seat. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even do that convincing. Yeah. But uh, I, I recognize that not everybody is going to agree. But uh, what I want um, people to think about is that um, let us not complain anymore. Mm. Yeah, turn that your frustration or your anger or whatever your depression your stress and all that into something much more meaningful because some people will think that you are not the first activist to go into politics sure. and some people think that when an activist go into politics they actually turn bad w will you turn bad i don't know <laughs> yeah but i hope that i and i told the uh my friends in the cso if i do step out of line mm. pull me back they have to uh, and, and that's where the difference is uh, mm. this is the new approach that we are trying is to see how we can actually link with the CSO so that um, we can actually work together mm. and if we step out of line pull us back they will still be as critical of me if I say something wrong okay yeah? uh, or against certain principles they have to be because that is their role uh, and I have to actually stay on course Mm. And th their role is to remind me that I have to stay on course. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Maria. Thank you Thank again you. for coming. And we really do look, f uh, look forward to the new politics that <laughs> you will be bringing. Yeah. And hopefully you succeed. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. 各位观众朋友,谢谢大家今晚的收看。随着大选的脚步越来越靠近,我们的 具争议性的这一些嘉宾们，所以如果你不想错过我们的直播节目的话，然后也要参与一起参与，就是来讨论或者来提问我们这一些嘉宾的话，就要记得留守百格。晚安，再见。